play guitar. Is that all? Yep. <laughs> What's up, beer pedal nerds? Scott? Ryan. So this is episode three. We're in it. We have the Rainbow Machine, Earthquaker Devices. It's a really, really cool pedal. It's it's very much weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. The reason why we're doing this pedal is also, you know, we do take requests on this channel. Of, mm -hmm. We definitely want you to send in requests of a certain pedal or even a certain beer that maybe we can find here in Austin, Texas. But we got this request from somebody who lives way too far away, Ryan. Here. Yeah. It's the only pedal I've ever seen of its kind. There are some that kind of do some similar stuff, but this is the only one that I've ever seen that, that just does this. So I will probably be pulling out my phone here for a few things. What Earthquaker calls this is a polyphonic pitch mesmerizer. What does that mean? It uses a DSP. It sounds sexy. Uh, dragon sex power. <laughs> yes. No. Oh. Close. It, you are so close. You're on the nose. Uh, digital signal processing. See? Uh, digital signal processing. Cool. Told you it was sexy. So digital signal processing, it uses that to create a real-time pitch shifting modulator. It's very, very funky. Very, very cool. So let's break down the controls of this real quick. So we have here primary pitch and secondary pitch and your pitch knob. So I'm going to break those down a little bit. Your pitch knob. That controls the pitch shifting sequence in there. And what that does, so all the way counterclockwise is a fourth below your note. So you have a note here, goes for fourth below. So you have potential of that. And when you crank it clockwise, it's a third above your dry pitch. Huh. So yeah, so you have your regular pitch, and then you have your third. Uh, harmony. And they even say in the description, it goes from a third or a fourth below to a third, third above and every atonal pitch in between. Yeah, the weird part, that's where that comes in. Exactly. Uh, even weirder is that this other thing that you're going to point out later, but... So what we have here is the primary and secondary. So your primary pitch is the volume of your harmony. So I set my pitch with the middle knob here. The primary is the volume of that pitch. So the secondary is an octave below the primary pitch. So you get collectively an amalgamation. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> of pitches that a cacophony. Oh, see that's I like that. Cacophony, if you will. Cacophony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the the primary function of this pedal. You have three other knobs. So we have is magic tone, and tracking. We'll get to magic soon enough. Ryan's super excited about that. Yay! I like magic. <laughs> I want more magic. <laughs> Give me more. I want more magic, Daddy, and I want do, it now! Do. Who says I can't? The man with a funny hat. I want one! Do a magic trick! Magic man! <laughs> Not yet, son. So tracking, what that does is it just, it's a slight delay to when your alternate pitches come in. So you can, so you can alter it. I don't know the shit. Okay, tracking. So tracking sets the lag time between your dry and your wet <laughs> signal. I'm glad. That's here to stay, the dry and the wet thing. Dry and wet, no, with it's, pedals, it's back. Ryan, with, with pedals, dry and wet is always present. Fantastic. Just like in real life. Fantastic. Why does anyone even turn on the dry setting? <laughs> What's the point? Well, you can't enjoy wet without a true dry. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. So tone, it, essentially, if, if your pedal's too, or if the, the amp or your setup's too bright, backing it off counterclockwise gives it a more vintage dark feel. So we're going to hear the pedal now with the just typical effect. I'm going to set it pretty darn... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ease into it for you guys. I'm going to ease into it. That was pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Let's get a little more... So the main thing with this pedal is when you put it right almost at midnight, which I say is right in the middle, it gives you a chorusy effect. So that's just your typical chorus. 
this. Yeah, not too weird there. Not too weird. So now we're going to do, and that's with both the primary and secondary pitch right at midnight as well. Kind of just doing that because you'll hear everything even. Yeah, I like how full that it sounds too. Yep. It's very, like, yeah. Let's go drastic. Fills out the space. kind of. Let's put it a fourth below. Ooh. Yeah. And I have my, I have my tracking set relatively low as well. So the lower you go is, is, is more lag. Watch this. So that's the lag time between the dry and wet. So it pitch shifts that time. So the faster you go, not not that much time in between. So I kind of have it like having it a low setting to give that nice kind of like a vibraphone, just like you're playing a bunch of notes and it just kind of all yeah kind of cool. Uh, what is that cl cluster chord kind of yeah, thing? It's a yeah, yeah, this basically is a, for me. I'm gonna in layman's terms. This, this is a cluster chord pedal. So yeah. put any put your most basic chords you know. D. We're trying to use our music degrees for something. <laughs> it's all it's just like slowly coming back to me. Yeah, these are very open chords and these are very simple chords. But the crazier you get, the crazier the pedal's gonna be. Is a very safe place to be. It's a perfect pitch. Yeah. Music degree. Hey. Hey. Let's go drastic. You're already done with yours. I got a head start. You're doing all the guitar That's true. shit. That's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go. Do your thing. Well, while he's gone, I'm setting it to a third above. So here's where it gets really weird. taking drugs at home, I hope this is going to help you a lot. Yeah, that's spacey, man. Yep. That's weird. Yep, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to engage the magic. So I have to pull my phone out for this because Earthquaker Devices does the most beautiful thing by... Like, I, I couldn't make a better write-up for this because, you know, pe pedal companies... Oh, we have a phase shifter. We, it shifts the phase, what this knob does. No, what they put for their magic, but this is what they say I have to say about magic. And you can choose how weird you get with magic control. This is a regeneration control that creates aliasing, amongst other things, by feeding the primary and secondary signals back on themselves and each other. So they intermix these two signals, and they literally say in a bunch of other stuff no one understands. <laughs> This is why I love this company so much. I'm not sponsored by them, but I couldn't pick a better company to just truly love for how they treat their gear, like how they treat their merchandise. And just like expanding barriers of, uh, you know, the technology of pedals. Mm -hmm. Seems like, you know, they're, it's so, they made such an experimental sounding pedal that they're like, we don't even know how to fuck, get, like the whole extent of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly and like they understand it, but if they tried to explain it, it's kind of like When they open the Ark of the Covenant, if they really tried to explain this, they it, it, our faces would melt <laughs> <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna engage the magic now I hear that yeah, the magic is engaging I might do anything That magic in the distance <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. I'm already excited. So I'm gonna set my magic knob at midnight. Everything I, I every time I did demo a pedal, I usually like to put everything at midnight because that's where the true neutral tone is gonna come from, and then you can alter it from there. That's just That's just what I think about it. <laughs> so <laughs> have some good drugs up there man <laughs> <laughs> i think they do that's <laughs> yeah that's yeah. trippy that is very trippy so that is the rainbow machine and there's i mean i i'm only going to touch on 
maybe a quarter, if not like a fifth of what you can do with this pedal. It has an expression pedal here to what solely controls the pitch knob. So you set it accordingly and you can, you can turn on the magic. And get all this craziness. And in the same time you're getting all that craziness, you can also get this craziness. Video game, like you can use this like a video game setting, like oh yeah. Um, I mean, it kind of has that like slight, you know, digital, almost eight bit sound, like mm -hmm. the, it's like old school kind of video game e sounds certain settings on this does. Mm -hmm. So lots to play around with. Oh yeah, lots to play around. I mean, I'm, I for for those at home, I'm I'm literally just touching on a very minimal uh, specs of the uh, of this pedal because it can just do so much. So Ryan, with the craziness, an absolute LSD induced coma that this pedal gives you what beer did you have to pair with it well the beer immediately came to mind uh this oh, oh. Uh, but nope that i meant to actually bring this oh yeah okay cool yeah that's more like it not dog in montucky i will drink them i won't lie my brain immediately went like you know rainbows and unicorns uh, when i saw this pedal being that it's such a weird Sounding pedal potential, you know, once you turn on the magic and all that, I was like, man, what's a weird experimental style of beer? Can be harmonious yet also dissonant, you know, if you're messing around with the knobs. I was like, okay, fruited sour at first, but I was like, even a step above that for a sour IPA. I didn't realize that was an actual style. It is a style. And uh, before I talk too much about the beer, uh, th this beer is, uh, I should have mentioned, is Smash Smash from... Blue Owl Brewing Company here in Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's a sour New Zealand topped IPA. Well, I mean, yeah, that sounds like this is gonna be a very, very interesting pairing. So, Maestro, what should we do? Let's give it a good old hardcore pour. Hardcore pour. Wow, so that's awesome. Tone notes <clears throat> of the pedal, lush. It's good at filling space. Broad, let's yeah, say broad. broad. Yeah. Crystalline? Yeah. It's kind of, let's like Crystalline. That. Yeah. It kind of feels like, like little crystals going out there. Yeah. Little prisms. Like you're in a, you know, a dreamscape. <laughs> yeah. Um, experimental fantasy dreamscape. I mean, I wonder if they came up with the name first of the pedal, or they just did, like, made the pedal, and they're like, what do we call it? Yeah, comment below if anybody knows that little piece of trivia. I, I would love to know that. Like, some engineer was just like, I got this, and they're like, whoa, that's really weird. Yeah. It's funny, like, to me, like, this isn't a pedal that's, like, buttery. This is a pedal... That's, it's almost like a bakery confection. I know bakery confections <laughs> use butter, but it's not like a buttery steak. It's like like a little like dessert treat, like a little tart. A Bakewell tart. I really don't know what a Bakewell tart is, but <laughs> you would think after watching like six seasons of the British Baking Show, I would know what a Bakewell tart is. I don't. Like a fancy kolache with like fruit preserves and like rock sugar. Like Yes, yes. Over, uh, yeah, I like, I like food. Yeah, we love food. I totally agree with that. So now let's, let's taste the beer again. <clears throat> I'm curious. Now we know that and see what the what the tasting notes are. All right. Yeah. I mean, immediately is just tart sour. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's for, just you know just like any really sour beer. The first taste is is kind of sour, and your palate has to 
adjust to that. Mm -hmm. It takes a second for your palate to adjust to the sourness level, but now that I've had a couple sips, my palate is adjusted. So for all of you sour beer um, haters out there, you're you're not like necessarily into sours too much. Or a lot of people that hate sour beers, they just they've had just one sip of the beer, and this goes for a lot of beers that they claim that they hate. You have one sip of the beer, and they're like, "Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do this." No, I'm like, it's like, this. it's like I'm sucking on a battery. Yeah, and it's like, no, you have to to give a beer at least three sips. I think for any beer to actually comfortably say that you don't like it. Great rule of thumb. Yeah, That's because a great rule your of thumb. palate has to adjust to the taste of anything. The, the you know, you taste anything, and immediately it's going to be a big flavor. When you taste almost anything, like certain flavors are going to jump out a lot at first. Big case with sour or even smoky beers, big time. Let your palate adjust to it, and then you'll actually start to taste other stuff, and it'll actually be more harmonious than you would have thought. Which is what this beer is actually yeah. evolving into for me. But in addition to that sourness, I'm getting a lot of fruitiness, and they didn't use any fruit. It's just this okay. variety of New Zealand hops called Waiiti, a fairly new hop. I saw that uh, the notes for that hop were it's kind of limey, citrusy, and has some stone fruit like peach apricot. And I'm definitely getting that peachy apricot ness. Let me let me look let me look further for that because I, I had no idea about that hop. For me, the lime is up front. Nice. And I'm tasting more, yeah, like as it goes along, it kind of, it kind of settles in to the peach and apricot. Like, yeah. I think you're right. It, it's like, it, it, it takes a while though because there's just this, there's that citrus that ci lime pop. and citrus like pop at the front. And then it kind of um, evolves into a kind of a peach nectar for me, like, okay. like a drinking peach juice. Okay. Uh, while all being sa sour still, but it's not like, like other sour IPAs I've had that are, they're just like way too hoppy, way too bitter. And that just was really clashy. Um, okay. This one is like actually harmonious in that it doesn't clash too hard. It's Got it. like the the hoppiness is really pleasant. I might dig this. Awesome. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's sour great. IPAs are usually not my jam. You know, it's funny because like yeah, I I would try to like connect this orally, and I really do believe that this. When I was talking about how it's like the petals kind of crystally, kind of like it feels like there's yeah. crystals forming whenever you do. Yeah. I get that with this beer. I really do. Yeah, it's a you know. Experimental pedal, experimental beer, sour IPAs are pretty niche um, and just weird. That, that's kind of where I was going. I, my mind immediately went for fruity sour and I was like, oh yeah, sour IPA. So on that note, we really want to tell you guys, like, I know we, you probably can't get this, you know, everywhere. Uh, Texas, you may, be right. able to get to, you may be able to get this um, in a few places or around Austin, maybe San Antonio, mm -hmm. maybe. If you can't find this particular one, they they it's part of a series that Blue Owl is doing. This is two out of three yeah. for 2020. I think after this, they'll continue to do it. Basically, it's a smash beer, smash IPA. Stands for single malt, single grain type of grain, and single hop, which in this they used uh, you know Y E T hops. I never knew that. I, I didn't realize smash was single malt and single hop. Yeah, it's a really good. Way to make beer where you just get the, you can, you know, get the unequivocal flavor of the hop and just the malt, the, the type of grain, you're usually barley that you're using. Looks like this, they use Gladfield Ale Malt, which is also from New Zealand. That's pretty cool. Wow. Um, and this, this, I was, you know, I read up on this malt, it looks like, it looks like their typical more like English ale style for your beer nerds. Uh, it's, it's kind of emulating like English pale ale malt or uh, like Maris Otter style. But it's grown in New Zealand, so that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty different. So I like that they went the full route of making this as you know as New Zealandy as possible. Which cool. New Zealand uh, is just as a country is like an anomaly of itself. It really is. I, I don't know much about it, but <laughs> pairs, the country pairs well with this pedal too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Alias. That is the anthem of New Zealand. <laughs> they filmed Lord of the Rings there, right? Yeah. This, uh, I think this pairing would go well with Peter Jackson. Yeah, he's... <laughs> <laughs> like a really dreamy state. <laughs> I'm really, really, really dreamy. I really think this beer, I'm, I'm gonna give this pretty much a 9.5, if not 10 out of 10. Oh, cool. I couldn't think of a better beer to really pair with this pedal. Like, So my point of this is if you have this pedal and you're playing on stage and you find a Blue Owl Smash IPA here in uh, Austin, you're gonna have a great time. Yeah, yeah and I think if you have this pedal and you're in your local market, once again, this is an R market. I couldn't, when I was at the store, you, I couldn't find another sour IPA. 
So look for your local sour IPA, even preferably fruited sour IPA. It's a beer that's can be harmonious, but also can be clashy, dissonant, you know, given if it's like too bitter, which mm-hmm. sometimes there's settings on this pedal, which make it sound dissonant. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, the, harmony, even... the harmonies are not harmonious. So to speak. No, I mean, even this is not harmonious. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think this one definitely knocked out of the park for sure. Sick, man. Stay Sick. thirsty. Keep searching for that tone, y'all. And we'll see you beer pedal nerds next week. Search, search for those weird tones. And happy late 4th of July. Cheers. Cheers. Oh.